Hey gang, Scott Davenport here. In this video, I've got three quick tips for you with Luminar. Before I share them, very quickly, I have updated Luminar Essentials, the book all about Luminar. So everything Luminar, it's all in one place. It's available now. It's on my website. It also has a print copy. So you know you can see there's a physical book you can get as well. You can get that on Amazon. I got the links below if you are looking for a book all about Luminar 4. That's the one you can get. So quick tips here. I got three things for you. And these are little uh, like you know, user interface type things that you may not know about. First is with the shortcuts area. That can be customized. In the selection area, you can decide to hide or show certain shortcuts. So if you don't care about you know recently edited things or recently added things, you can turn those on and off so they disappear from the shortcuts. Related to that, any album or any folder can be added to the shortcuts area. Say I'm doing a lot of stuff with this folder of main right now. I want to have it handy. I can right click on it, add it to the shortcuts, and it's up here so I can quickly bounce to it. Imagine this having many, 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 many folders. I can easily get to that. And the same holds true for albums. I can add those to the shortcuts as well. And so easy access to everything in the shortcuts area. The second one is with the histograms. The histogram is available in the info panel, whether you're in library or edit. But if you're in the edit mode, you have this as well. And by default, you see all these different you know, color regions and so forth. That's all the luminance values, reds, greens, blues. And when they mix, you get these you know, cyans and, and, uh, and other things like there. When you click on this, single click, now I have just the reds, just the greens, just the blues, just the luminance, and then back to the combination. So you can actually, if you need to separate things and see just what's going on with a particular color channel, you can do that by clicking on the histogram. Now, why does that get interesting? It's like, well, if you're dealing with a photo that has uh, color tints in one area, like more in the shadows than others, you can more accurately see that by clicking around here. In this photo, you know, reds are pretty, pretty flat. Greens are slightly more biased up into the highlights. Blues are definitely biased up in the highlights, and luminance is pretty easy. I go into the edit module and get into the professional area. In the color enhancer, under advanced, I have shadows, midtones, and highlights, and I can bias those things in different directions. Where, if, for example, I have a photo where the reds are more so uh, saturated or higher up in the in the highlights, I can go into the highlights there, and maybe I'd bias those a little bit more towards cyan. So you can do some more targeted color corrections, and going back to that histogram help yourself out by looking at just the color channel that you are interested in for that particular adjustment. The third tip is with Dodge and Burn. The Dodge and Burn tool, I click Start Painting. I've got my Lighten, Darken, Erase, and I have the size of the brush and the strength of the brush. What I don't have is a control over the feather. There's nothing in the toolbars to let me work with that. I have keyboard shortcuts. And so the square bracket keys grow and shrink the brush. If I hold down the shift key, I can shrink and grow the feather. So you have the option to control the feather in the dodge and burn tool, but you gotta use the keyboard shortcuts to do it. Well, there you go, three quick things in Luminar. Hope you find those useful. If you're looking for a good book that explains all of Luminar 4, check out Luminar Essentials, links are below. And until next time, my name's Scott Davenport, have fun.